I'm in a suit. You know what that means. Today, I'm ranking watch brands again. For the third year in a row. For the third year in a row. Now, that's for the second year in a row, but the first one, then we done it a year later, and then we done it... It's effectively, it's two years, but then this is the third. I think we're gonna have some surprises. We're gonna have some changes. That tastes like promotion. Yeah! I haven't seen which brands you put in. Now you've put every brand in there, right? Every brand that I know is in there. Guys, I, I'm not responsible for this. I don't do the technical things and stuff and preparing this. I do f all with my life. It's Johnny that's responsible for the list. So if there's a brand that's missing, don't comment to me that I forgot a brand. Just comment Johnny. Johnny forgot a brand. Thank you. You're saying that when this video is dropping we could have a million subscribers yeah so that means a million people have seen value in this channel a million people before we get started if you want to buy or sell your watch go to prideandpinion.com this is really weird i'm on the right side of the table with the camera there that's up normally i'm in the middle but this is for you to put the tier list here isn't it yeah all right, let her have it. Let's get stuck in Cartier. This year, Cartier has showed the world how to make watches. Cartier is like this kid at school, right? That always shows off, but just always has it right. It's fucking ridiculous. Most people don't even know this, but Cartier is like the number two in watch sales in the world. Rolex is number one, and then it's Cartier. So Cartier is like the daddy. They're unbelievable. But Cartier is not the first watch brand you think of when you think about a watch brand. You think about Cartier as a jewelry brand and to be honest they are a jewelry brand but then all of a sudden they show the world how to make watches again Cartier made a complete movement inside a router you know a router the thing that spins for an automatic watch right they actually made a movement inside that router like how the f do you even think about that I'm making a full car inside a wheel it's crazy. Cartier is absolutely class. I have no idea where I've put them the last couple of years. I would always buy a Cartier. For me, Cartier belongs to the class category. But Cartier is class. Well done if you bought a Cartier. <laughs> Jacob & Co. Do you know what Jacob & Co has done this year? Absolutely f all. Producing the same sh same fucking bullshit with the same fucking backstory. It's fucking useless. We just put that in the shite category. I think it's been always in the shite category in every tier list video, hasn't it? Wouldn't be surprised. Ah, exactly. Belova. Yeah, no, put that in the fucking shite category because Belova doesn't do anything. Genuinely, a rich history as, as a watch brand, like fucking right. They were actually founded in America and are currently owned by Citizen. The funny fact, they're older than Rolex, so they've been making watches longer than Rolex. Like, I mean, rich history, but today, Citizen is just Making dog shit of it. Like, honestly, they're making dog shit of below. That's f***ing ridiculous. It's f***ing dog shit. Bulgari! I think I always put Bulgari in the would buy category, you know. I would say I would buy. It's not about what I have put it in. It's about where I would put it today. Although I absolutely celebrate the engineering of the Octo Finissimo and the whole Octo line, including the Octo Roma, etc. By the way, that blue dial, and I think I spoke about this in the past, unbelievable. But it just doesn't fit me. It doesn't suit me. I've tried. I had an Octo Finissimo for a week on my wrist, and it feels like... It's an incredible watch, but I just don't have a connection with them. So, as a watch brand goes, 100% would buy. But this is my personal list. And I can do what the f I want to do. And I wouldn't buy a Bulgari anymore. So, I'm not going to put it in a would buy category. But if you want to buy a Bulgari, there's nothing wrong with that. I would put it in the Merc category. I'm pretty sure we've demoted Bulgari this time. Roger Dubois, I have nothing nice to say about Roger Dubois. And if you have nothing nice to say, say nothing at all. Shite. Versace is not a watch brand, you know. It's f***ing dog shit. Right, this whole shite category is getting a bit too full now. And we've only done like f***ing five brands. All them are PK. I f***ing love it. I f***ing love it, you dirty whore. Oh, I love it. I've been obsessed with f***ing AP this year. They have f***ing knocked it out of the park. Where were they previously? Class. Oh, no, they're f***ing class. They're still class. A good year doesn't mean you get upgraded to f***ing God tier. For God tier, you need to have a lifelong standing thing where you make a change in the watch world, right? They need to do this for another 10 years before I promote them. Have you seen that DJ watch? Mate, I'm obsessed with that watch. Now the thing is, if I buy an AP from AP, they'll look at me as like, ah, you sell that sh blah, blah, blah. It's a bit difficult for me to buy a watch. 
But the funny thing is, any watch I've ever bought at an AD, I have never sold. Period. There's several variations of this watch. I think in 37 mil and in 43 mil. There's also ones with gem set, and I think they are white gold. And there's a full blacked out one. All I want, and I want this for Christmas, right? I want this on my Christmas list. And I don't want it for free. I just want to pay for it. But I want to finally buy a watch from AP again. I bought my last watch at AP in 2019. All I want for Christmas is a watch from AP. Reference number 15600 TI. It's a full titanium royal love that watch that is my goal for this year i'll let you know if it happened we put ap in the class category a long and Serna. again this year mate a long and Serna. they haven't given me a boner yet you see what i mean again this year they haven't given me a boner at all like a big heart on like what ap has done like bring out a watch and i have a, i'm just sitting there looking at it with a Boner. I am a horolosexual, right? I get boners from watches, right? <laughs> Fact. But this year, Elon and Söhne hasn't given me a boner again. But let me let me clarify this, right? Probably best in the industry, finish-wise, mainstream. Don't make you finish. <laughs> Not the <to> finish. <laughs> they don't make me finish. <laughs> that is. Oh. Meh. I'm putting them in meh. Why did you put Fossil in this? The Fossil group actually owns a lot of fashion watch brands. Like they own Michael Kors and shit like that. One watch brand that I do really like, they're really, really thin. They're called Skagen and I think they're they're Swedish or they're Finnish. No, they're not Finnish. They're Danish. Either they're they're from that part of the world, the cold part of the world. Yeah, I do like, do like that, but Fossil itself, they're f dog shit. I don't know why you put this on here. It's not even a f Daniel Wellington. Can we just straight put that in f dog shit? Orient. All right, this is like the whole dog shit category. Is Can we put a new one? Like sh category, but also dog shit category. That's next year. We'll put next year the dog shit. Orient. Meh. No shit. No, they're not shit. They're good as a starter, but they're a bit meh. Orient is like is like this moment at 3 a.m. in a club, right? You haven't pulled yet. You really want to pull. The two prospects are both below average, and you do go for it, right? It's, yeah. That's Orient. We'll put it in a meh category because it's a bit meh. Bell and Ross. Yeah, Bell and Ross. You know what? The guys at Bell and Ross are actually quite friendly. Send me emails and asking if I want to review something. I want to pee. Can I pee? Right. Can you put a piss break on, no? Yeah. I am going for a pee. Oh, that was good. Bell and Ross, honestly, I have nothing to say about Bell and Ross. They're kind of sending me emails and stuff, but no, for me, shite. Balmerche, yeah, I have nothing nice to say about that either. Oh, no, you know what? I'm just gonna piss off so many people. You know what? F it. I don't give a shit. I don't like it. There's not a watch that makes me wet, hard, or in any way, shape, or form enthusiastic. Balmerche, this year, has done f all. F shite category. The whole shite category is full. What the f Blancpain. Blancpain is the oldest watch brand in the world. And you know who revived Blancpain? The answers always seem to be Gerald Genta. No, <laughs> it's not. You c <laughs> Jean Claude Biver, right? He f revived Blancpain. Nah, he didn't revive it. He bought the name for like twenty-five thousand dollars and then built an entire company around it, which is very complicated. And he sold the company for like a lot of million dollars and made good money out of it. You know that Blancpain has never made a quartz movement ever. And I do like the Fifty Phantoms. That's the OG of the dive watches. Earlier, actually, than the Rolex Submariner. Like it, but Blancpain, I still put it, I would put it in the Meur category, right? In the Meur. In the Meur. Oh. Oh, oh. Tudor, disclaimer, I haven't got a boner from Tudor yet, but they just make all round incredible watches. And this year they knocked it out of the park again. And they do it every year with the Black Bay Pro. What an incredible watch. Then they made the Root Beer, just randomly came out of the blue with the new Pelagos 39, a full titanium 39 millimeter dive watch. I rather buy a Tudor than a Rolex. Tudor, class, again. Frank Muller, do you know about my guilty pleasure with, with that brand? I have one guilty pleasure. Frank Muller makes a watch called the Las Vegas, right? And it has a roulette dial. Means you can push a button and the roulette thing spins. Now, as you know, I'm a gambling addict, right? And I really want to own one of those to then go to the casino and play the number that comes up on the watch. I want to experience that feeling. It will probably be disappointed because then I look on the dial, it's a Frank Muller, but that's not the point, right? I really love that. That's my guilty pleasure. But Frank Muller, to be honest, this year, mate, I don't know if they actually sell watches. Who buys that shit? They've done nothing. They don't add value anymore. They have added value in the past, by the way, because the tonneau shape of the Frank Muller, they were the first. So Frank Muller, unfortunately, your history is not strong enough to keep you alive. I don't know why you're still alive. F off. <laughs> 
I have a story to tell. Jullie say Nardin are disrespectful idiots. Next to that, they created this freak, right? It's called the Jullie say Nardin freak. They created this years ago. It looks absolutely f horrible. Hublot could have made it. So we were at Watches and Wonders. The only thing they can talk about at Jullie say Nardin is the f freak. I have never heard anyone that have bought a f freak. So they spent millions upon millions to have a stand in Watches and Wonders to promote the freak. I don't get it. For the first time in my life, I get a watch brand DMing me. You say not that. We have a watch show on the 29th of August, blah, 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 blah. Do you want to come? And I'm like, f***ing right, let her have it. I want to come. And I reply very kindly, yes, of course. Thank you so much for the invitation. They, they left me on red. And then I replied, I haven't heard anything from you. So left me on red. I'm like, guys, hello, what's going on? Read it again. Left me on red. Again, you invite someone and you f***ing ignore them. That's not how you treat people, mate. For that and your sh f freak, I will put you in the f***ing hero category. You're a f***ing dog sh Treat people with respect and start making nice watches again. Because your history is there. But the last couple of years, you've done f***ing all. Right, Moblazel's a f***ing sh I still have nothing in the Dubai category. Brague, what has Brague done since 1795? All. Put them in a mer category. Oh, Richard Mill. Richard Mill has been doing so well the last two years. And the last year, incredible. Again. I like Richard Mill. I'm sorry. I think from the first tier list video to this one, Richard Mill made a really, really steady f upgrade. Richard Mill. I'll put them in the meh category. Class category. I think it's f class. There's one thing that really, really f pissed me off, right? I'm a big Ferrari fan. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm a Richard Mille fanboy as well. And then, and then they come together, right? This one force. And then they produce a watch together. BOOM! A watch! BOOM! Dog sh**. The Richard Mille UP01. Okay, it's the thinnest movement ever created in a watch. 1.75 millimeters. Engineering, incredible. But it looks f***ing dog sh**. Finally. Finally! Casio's been going steady. Have you seen the Casio oak versions in full steel? Oh, man, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I get really dirty with that. Like, I love it. Casio is god tier. Will always be god tier. Unless they f*** it up. But this year, they haven't f***ed it up. We finally have a brand in the god tier category. By the way, the god tier category this year is gonna be different. Brettling. You know the YouTube channel, Theo and Harris? Big inspiration for me back in the day. They recently made a video about Brettling's story. I highly I really recommend you to watch that video, by the way. What George Kern has done with Brettling this year, again, knocked it out of the park. But I do have to agree with Christian of Theo and Harris with what they said. They don't use their rich story. Brettling has so many stories to tell and they just don't talk about it. It's a missed opportunity and, and for that, I'm sad. But Brettling has done so incredibly well this year that I'm going to put them in the would buy category. Because yes, there I would go. buy, I would buy a Brettling today. Bremont, British watch brand. Bremont invited me over to come uh, to an event, actually, and it's it, probably in a week time or something. But it's a black tie event, and there's a bit of a problem. I'm a fat f right? And I do have a black tie. I do have a, I do have a tuxedo, right? But at the moment, that tuxedo doesn't fit me because I blew up like a balloon, right? There's too much air inside me. Now I need to let it out, right? I just need to lose weight. And for that event, I'm not gonna buy a f tuxedo. So I think I'm just not gonna go because I don't want to come like, you know what I mean? But I really appreciate Bremen and their team. They've been super kind, super friendly, but we're not talking about their team. I just want to understand more and speak more with Bremen about their future and what they want to do. They're starting to make movements in-house. They're making real, real effort to bring British watchmaking back. But today I'm still not really convinced about designs, etc. But we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. We'll put them in the Merc category. That's not a bad role, you know. Bulgari, Elon and Söhne, Orient, Blancpain, Breguet and Bremen. Role this is gonna be controversial. Can I just move this as last? I have a really important story to tell. So I just moved Rolex to the last brand I'm gonna put into the list. Do you want me to go quickly through this or what? Yeah, speed round. Oh, uh, speed round, right. Zenith is would buy. Chopard is meh. I just, I don't get Chopard anymore, you know. Vacheron Constantine, class. What they've done with that 222, unbelievable. What they've done with the overseas, a skeletonized perpetual calendar overseas. Bizarre! Mate, I saw that watch and watch and wonders. I literally got a boner. I want that watch. Right, controversial one. Omega. What do you think of my Seamaster? You know what? I thought blue on blue, right? Absolutely nice watch. What has Omega done this year? There's not really anything special, is there? I made a comment about this and I think I called Omega entry-level luxury, which they still are. They're consistent. You can't fault that. Omega is just would buy. Omega is good. You can't go wrong with Omega. There's an Omega Seamaster 300M, which you can get at prideandpinion.com. If you actually want to buy any of these brands, go to prideandpinion.com. Except one. There's one brand we don't sell. Oris. I like like Oris. What Oris has done is 
hard. What they've done with the 55 in general, unbelievable. What an incredibly beautiful watch. What they've done with the Aquas as well. I love Auras. Auras is making big, big steps, you know. Auras should be in the would buy category. That's value for money. Genuinely value for money. Ron Seiko, shite or meh. I don't know where I put them previously, but I'm going to put them in the meh category now. They're not really dog shit because they're actually good. And some of their dials are unbelievable. But 95% of their catalog is shit. Gucci, name me any good Gucci brand. Off. Why the f do you put that on anyway? There's no need for that. Like you want speed round, right? You want you want me to be faster. Take Philippe, class, Hamilton, would buy. Failure for money. Unbelievable. <laughs> Don't want to talk about it. Hublot, f off. Tech Hoyer, I'll put them in the mur category. Don't know where I've put them in previously, but I do really like the new Octavia line. And I do really like the new chronographs from Carrera. But they also brought out some weird line that really, really awfully looks like this. But for that, I still will put them in the mur category. It's just expensive fashion watch. It's not a watch brand. Filippo Hublot category. Why do you put that on? H. Moser, yeah. I have been a big fan of H. Moser the last couple of years. This year, however, I'm going to change my mind. I spoke with H. Moser. I've engaged with H. Moser. One of their directors texted me last week saying, why can you not speak like Andrew Morgan? Andrew, big shout out. You know who Andrew Morgan is, right? Yeah. The voice of Watchfinder. Why can you not speak like him? What the f I am real. I'm as real as they get. That shows that H. Moser, same as 99% of the other brands, have no idea who their customers are. You can say what you want about Tech Hoyer and Omega, but they damn well know what their customers are. I am as real as they get, and I will always speak the truth. Take it or f leave it. What you've done this year hasn't been spectacular either. Get your shit together because you have the potential to really, really make an impact in the watch world. I don't know where I put them before, but I'll put them in the Merc category. Timex, let her have it. Goodbye. Yes, I put Timex in the same category as Zenith, Bretling, and eh, Oris, and whatever the fuck is on that list. Because Timex is good. Failure for money, cheapest mechanical movement you can buy. This is where every watch guy has to start. Timex. Panerai, don't even want to talk about it. Shite category. Paneristi, respect to use. Unbelievable. IWC. <laughs> I f love what IWC has done this year. And I love what IWC has done the last couple of years. I love IWC. Making the Le Petit Prince a tight bit smaller, that was genius. Love it. For the young professional, IWC is the brand. I will buy IWC over Omega all day, every day. Class or I would buy category. Hard one, hard one. Would buy category because I bought them. They need two more solid years to go in the glass category. Invicta, f dog sh Jacques et Dreux. Should we stop talking about that? I need to be more respectful because they make some insane watches, but it's just not to my taste at all. I put them in the shite category. Gerard Perigot would buy category. I love the Lorietto. I love it. It's one of the first ever steel sports watches produced. It was produced before the Nautilus. Keep in mind, before the Nautilus in 1975. Rich history, but as a brand, they also make dog sh so I can't put them in the f class category, but I would put them in the buy category. What an incredible brand on the new Polaris, mate. Unbelievable. I do really, really like them, but I wouldn't put them in the class category, but I would put them in the boot buy category. Hermes. I think I put Hermes in the shite category previously, but Hermes is getting seriously into watchmaking, you know. Starting to make some really, really quirky stuff. Yeah, I mean, most of their line is still dog shit and massively overpriced, may I add. So Hermes still belongs in the shite category, but if they head the same direction they're heading right now, then they could potentially make an upgrade next year. But for now they're f***ing dog shit. Longines, standard, would buy. Piaget, shite. Movement, f***ing shite. FB Jouren, unbelievable class. Emporio, Armani. Why the f*** do you even put this on there? Shite. Vincero, f***ing shit. Citizen, f***ing. Uh, Citizen makes some good shit. They own a few good watch brands. They own a few f***ing bullshit things. Tissot would buy. And then... Last but not least. All right, we need a conversation, ladies and gentlemen. First, before I put Rolex in the category, I just want to summarize this list. So I have put Bretling above Elon and Cerner. <laughs> I put Timex above Elon and Cerner. Yes, I have. All joking aside, I want to have a conversation about Rolex. Rolex has disappointed me this year again. Rolex has been a disappointment for the last three years in a row, to be completely honest. They don't do anything innovative. They don't do anything new. They just do the same trick, but then do it a little bit different every Time. Bring out a new GMT with a crown on the other side. You're just bringing another waiting list. Their customers want a precious metal Daytona with a ceramic bezel. Their customers want Oyster Flex in the Submariner. Rolex doesn't give a shit about their customers. And that makes me sad because Rolex for me is the reason why I'm obsessed with watches today. Rolex is my most favorite watch brand in the whole world. But seeing Rolex not giving a shit about their customers, seeing Rolex treating their customers the way they currently do is a disgrace. I shouldn't be grateful spending my hard-earned money with you. Don't forget that. Rolex, unfortunately, you're not on the top of the game anymore. 
anymore. Other brands are catching up. AP is heading towards a direction where they're gonna be more popular than Rolex. As a Rolex fanboy, I wouldn't like that to happen. I am very sad to say I'm gonna demote Rolex to the Merc category. Looking at the tier list, I'm quite happy with this year. Yeah, I think I'll get some stake for the fact that I put Bretling above <laughs> <laughs> Elon and Sona and put Casio above FB Journe. I think I couldn't be more accurate, you know. I'm very happy with it. Let's see what happens next year. I hope Rolex get their shit together.